Have you noticed just how many horror games are coming out this year? Dead Space, Resident Evil 4, Alan Awake 2, Alone in the Dark, Silent Hill 2, Amnesia the Bunker. And I'm not just talking any kind of horror, but specifically survival horror. And this isn't just like some mainstream trend that's happening too. It is happening also in the indie scene. <laughs> Now sure, survival horror isn't some new thing by any means, but I'd argue that what we're seeing right now is an era of survival horror that has been dormant for 20 years. It is 2023, and we are in the midst of a full-fledged survival horror renaissance. Resident Evil. I love survival horror, if that wasn't already abundantly obvious. But when I say survival horror, I'm talking like the de-emphasized combat, inventory management, scarce resource, exploration, puzzle solving kind of survival horror. Basically the OG Resident Evil style from the 90s. And I have to emphasize the 90s because survival horror lost its identity sometime in the early 2000s. In fact, not too long after Code Veronica came out. All right, real quick, some context. So. Alone in the Dark kind of started this whole thing in 1992, but it walked so Resident Evil could essentially run, which set the standard for the genre in 1996. But eventually the genre became oversaturated and well, there wasn't really a whole lot of innovation happening. The fixed camera angles, the slow gameplay, the inventory management, it didn't really age that well in the PS2 era, did it, Lily? No, it did not. But then Resident Evil 4 came along and it didn't quite innovate the survival horror genre so much as it innovated the entire medium. After this, survival horror basically evolved into action horror. Gone were the days of resource management, exploration, scaled back combat, and puzzle solving. Resident Evil 4 had all those things for the record that just wasn't what stuck following the game's success. But then the horror genre evolved again, this time abandoning action altogether with Amnesia, The Dark Descent. But it really became more like hide and seek horror as you were powerless from the creatures chasing you. And then the genre evolved again with PT in 2014, where a subgenre formed such as the psychological haunted house genre thing. <laughs> spawning games like Layers of Fear or Visage. These games emphasize the pure horror of it, the terror, just flat out being scared. Now, the Amnesias, the Outlasts, and the PTs, they're totally fine. But if I'm speaking frankly, I didn't really get into the horror genre because I liked being scared. I got into survival horror specifically because there's a thrill in the potential to possibly overcome a dire situation. It's not about being powered up, but it's not about being powerless either. But alas, the genre that I loved, that I grew up with for those 15, 20 some years was now just simply something nostalgic. Until now. And I ain't just talking about remakes either. Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil 2 Remake tiptoed survival horror back into the mainstream and proved that the slower paced inventory and explorative elements can still thrive in modern game design. But there is a whole other story that's happening in the indie scene. As we see the trend of remakes rise, it's the indies where survival horror is, in a way, having its biggest comeback by way of capturing the style of games from the 90s. The fixed camera angles, the low poly graphics, the inventory management, the whole shebang. Some even simulate CRT TV filters. And here's probably the thing that I think is the coolest. We are essentially getting two revivals at the exact same time for the exact same genre. On one hand, it's the mainstream revival, which is doing it with remakes. But the remakes are recapturing the past by reimagining them for a modern audience and in doing so, evolving the genre. I actually made an entire video about that that you should consider watching. But then on the other hand, we have the whole indie thing that's happening, which is using the past to inspire new ideas and stories while still retaining the aesthetic of the past, like fixed camera angles and low poly and all that jazz. But something else that's happening that's super interesting there is that we're getting to see aesthetics and genres that weren't even done at the height of the mid 90s, like 
grindhouse VHS style horror like Bloodwash and Rewind or Die. Like, I tend to think that the indie scene often reflects what's missing from the AAA space. So like, consider 2D pixel art, 2D platformers, and like the point and click adventure. The indie scene swept in with those after they were long gone from the AAA space. But what's so fascinating of what's happening right now with survival horror is that it's happening at the exact same time with the mainstream market. It's almost like they're in tandem. In fact, the genre is having such a kickback that games like Amnesia The Dark Descent, a game that completely removed combat and changed horror in 2010, added a gun in Amnesia The Bunker. Think about that. Then there's the case of Alan Wake, a game that's returning 13 years later as a full-fledged survival horror game. Steal coffee! A game with limited inventory, resource management, puzzle solving, all that jazz. Which, by the way, is a full-fledged detective game, which is right up this dude's alley. Whew, what a time to be alive. Two favorite genres and a game that I love by a developer I love, blessed f***ing B. When by comparison, the original was an action adventure that was set in a horror-like story. I squeezed the flashlight like my life depended on it. With it, I could save myself. I could save Alice. It's kind of weird for me to say this, but I feel like for most of my adult life, survival horror has kind of been like a niche genre. But more and more during this past year, I've had more people asking me, where do I begin if I want to get into it? And that is a telltale sign it is back in fashion. And probably the most exciting thing about answering that question is that there's like now three avenues you can go to experience it. And none of them are wrong. Like you're no longer bound to have to go to the past to be able to experience the core fundamentals of what makes survival horror because there are so many things out there right now this year that are doing it exceptionally well. I'm just happy to be living in a moment in which something I love, something that defined a lot of my views on games, was able to come back to have this resurgence, and not just for nostalgia's sake, but to actually see how something from the past can come back and evolve for modern audiences, and even potentially set the path forward for games in the genre to come. That's super cool. At least I think so. All right. Thanks for watching, folks. I'm Kurt. Till next time, see ya.